Welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. So in this video, we are going to talk about Clostridium difficile, right? So uh, Clostridium difficile, also known as C. diff, is a gram-positive bacilli, right? Like any other Clostridium species, it's an obligate anaerobe, right? It doesn't like oxygen. And most importantly, it has the ability to form spores, right? All the Clostridium species, they form spores right so on microscope they look like this right so here you have your clostridium right so on the center you can see this uh it's a little bit light here you this is a spore right sometimes it is on the center sometimes it is on the end of the road right it, it just depend right but this is the basic uh view you get right so Clostridium difficile is responsible for causing nosocomial diarrhea. How does this happen? Hospitalized patients take a lot of antibiotics, weakening the microbiota in our intestines, right? So what will happen is that this will allow germination of spores and causing diarrhea. Uh, like I will show you in the next slide, the pathogenesis, right? So here are just uh, examples of uh, antibiotics. Uh, clindamycin, ampicillin, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolones, and also is associated with proton pump inhibitors. But clindamycin is on number one, right? Just to remember that clindamycin is on number one, right? So let's look at uh, toxins, right? So Clostridium difficile produces two kinds of toxins exotoxin a and exotoxin b starting with exotoxin a this exotoxin attaches to brush borders of the enterocytes causing inflammation cell death and watery diarrhea right so once again exotoxin a is responsible for watery diarrhea right moving to the next exotoxin b this exotoxin it causes uh, depolymerization. De okay, this was supposed to be depolymerization of actin filaments, right? So this depolymerization uh, will lead to enterocyte death and necrosis. The clinical feature here caused by exotoxin B is pseudomembranous colitis, right? Pseudomembranous colitis. Uh, it looks like this on endoscope. Right, it looks like this. Okay, so now let's talk about diagnosis. Uh, you can use endoscope, as I just mentioned, or on histology, right? Uh, and here you can actually see the pseudomembrane. But the more specific way is use of PCR or, or antigen detection, right? So this one is specific specific for identifying one or both toxins in this two, right? So that's where you use what? You use your uh, polymerase chain reaction, that's PCR. Okay, let's talk about treatment. On treatment, here we use oral vancomycin and sometimes fidaxomycin, right? Here you need to remember, we don't use IV vancomycin, but we use oral, right? So this, this kind of uh, drug administration targets what? Targets the bacteria which are already in the GIT. The reason why we use oral is because there is a poor absorption of this drug. So it is, it is an advantage if we talk about like a uh, side effects point of view, right? Okay, so as any other anaerobe, we can also use uh, metronidazole. For recurrent cases, we can consider uh, repeating like the prior regimen or sometimes fecal microbiota transplant. All right, so uh, this is just the, the scheme. I've been using this, uh, this diagram for a long time now, right? So if you have been following, you already know that we covered all of this bacteria. So if you click the bacteriology playlist, you will watch all these videos, right? 
and we also talked about other species of Clostridia like Clostridium uh, tetani and Clostridium uh, botulinum. Yes. So in the next video, we will finish uh, doing Clostridium perferingens, right? We will finish the Clostridia species, right? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, share with your friends. And click the notification bell so that you will see the notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks so much.